All right, so um, first thing that I want you guys to go over is make sure that you know the structure of ATP. So know where the phosphate group is, know where the sugar is, be able to identify um, you know, the nucleic acid all right, that is represented. So the three different parts of ATP. So if I give you them A, B, and C, make sure you can identify them. Go over all of the organelles that we went over, all right? For example, be able to tell what the cell membrane does. Be able to explain what the nucleus does. Be able to explain what the mitochondria, the rough ER. Okay, you may see questions that ask you, okay, the nucleus does this, and you have four choices to select from. Review the different types of diffusion. We have facilitated diffusion and we have osmosis. Both of them are free, meaning that it does not require cellular energy. Osmosis is the movement of water. Facilitated diffusion, larger particles come into the cell. That's passive transport. Make sure you know the difference between active and passive transport. Active transport goes against the concentration gradient. So instead of going from greater to lesser, active transport may go from lesser to greater. Okay, that requires cellular energy. It goes against the grain. Remember, I use the analogy of being rebellious and going against the rules or being different. In life, sometimes being different is required and it's a great thing to be different, but it does require maybe a different attitude or a different view of life in order to accept being different, okay? but there are benefits to being different. All right, so we're talking about also know the difference between ionic and covalent bonds. Ionic bonding is exchanging of electrons, covalent is sharing. Polar covalent bonds are an unequal sharing of electrons. Be able to identify the three particles that make up an atom. Protons, neutrons, and electrons, and know what each does or contributes, the charges. Review the steps of the scientific method. Okay, starting with making an observation or having a question all the way through the process. Okay, your experimental part, having your independent and dependent variables, make sure you review the difference between those. Review the photosynthetic equation, equation for photosynthesis. Identify the reactants on the left, the products on the right. Make sure you're able to do that, not only but the numbers or the formulas, but also just written out. Okay, if I just write it out, make sure I can identify it. Same thing with cellular respiration. Know that equation as well. Review the proper sequence of events in cellular respiration. So if I start with glycolysis, what do I go next? And then after that, also identify the amount of ATPs that happen in glycolysis. How many ATPs happen in fermentation? How many happen in the Krebs cycle? And how many happen in the ETC or the electron transport chain? Also know where each part takes place. So glycolysis, what takes place in glycolysis? what takes place in the, in the Krebs cycle, and what takes place, um, or where, excuse me, where in the mitochondrial membrane they take place, sorry. These are rhetorical. Review the characteristics of living things. So make sure you can list and choose from the characteristics of life. What makes a, a living thing a living thing? Review solvent, water is an example of a solvent, solute, sugar and salt are examples of that, and solutions. Okay, you have heterogeneous mixtures and homogeneous mixtures. Why did Gregor Mendel study pea plants? Study the structure of a chromosome so that you can identify the centromere, and the sister chromatids. 
Review the principle of the cell theory and all the characteristics of cell theory. There are four macromolecules. Make sure you can identify the types of macromolecules, the monomers or the building blocks of those macromolecules, the function and an example. Carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids. Okay, All of them have basic building blocks, all of them have examples, and all of them um, have functions. We went over a chart that may be very useful for you guys. When you're distinguishing between the two types of fermentation, one is lactic acid, one is alcoholic. Make sure you review which organisms alcoholic occurs in and which organisms lactic acid occurs in. Be able to give the, uh, be able to distinguish between the cellular respiration and photosynthesis. So you can answer a question like, well, how are these processes the same? How are they different? You know, what makes them opposites? Describe the main difference or major differences between plants and animal cells. When you're going over glycolysis and the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, make sure you understand and review how many ATPs are made in each one of those things. Not only should you know the three parts of the ATP molecule by looking at a picture, but if I just give you the words, you should be able to identify the words too, the three parts in written format or fashion. Obviously, Punnett squares, understanding dominance versus recessiveness. So it's very important that you understand if I give you something that has the dominant trait and the recessive trait, you should be able to figure this other stuff out. So, for example, if I tell you that round is dominant and wrinkled is recessive, and I tell you one parent is homozygous round, two capital letters, the other parent is obviously going to be homozygous wrinkled, okay, because wrinkled is a recessive. So, capital R, capital R, cross with lowercase r, lowercase r, that should be your, your crosses. So, you need to be able to do Punnett squares when the letters are given, but you also have to be able to do Punnett squares if I just give you the wording. Okay, remember, homo, the prefix is the same. Hetero, the prefix is different. Okay, if I tell you heterozygous anything, you know which one is the dominant trait because right after heterozygous, they're going to tell you, hey, it's heterozygous round. So that means round is capital. Okay, or round is the dominant trait. Go over Mendel's uh, laws, the law of independent assortment, okay, the law of segregation, also called the principle of independent assortment or principle of segregation. Make sure you know the proper sequence of mitosis. I gave you a mnemonic tool, PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So make sure you know that proper sequence, and if you're asked to list it in the question, that you can identify it. Also, the levels of organization. We start with a cell, make sure you can go all the way up and go in reverse also. Each phase of mitosis, know what happens in prophase, know what happens in metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Study any diagram you can find that has the parts of the cell cycle. So we know that interphase has three parts, G1, G2 and S. We also know that there's M phase. M phase is the nickname for mitosis. And then we know that cytokinesis is the last part of the cell cycle. Okay? There are 75 multiple choice. There are five short answers, and I'm gonna to describe to you right now what they're, what they're about, so don't gasp or freak out, but within those five questions is broken down to parts. So it's like 25 
25 independent parts in the five questions. So basically your test is composed of 75% multiple choice, 25% written. Here are the things you need to work on for the short answers. You need to study an animal cell so that you can identify organelles. So if I tell you, hey, what's that in F? What's that in B? What's that in whatever? Be able to identify them. Second short answer. You're going to have to identify the phases of the cell cycle. Kind of similar to what we did on our test where you had cells in different parts of mitosis and the cell cycle. And you had to say, okay, this is that. This is anaphase. This is prophase. This is telophase. And make sure you put it in the proper sequence as well. Do that correctly this time because some of you guys didn't do very well in the second part of that. Third question, you're going to have to look at a mitochondria. You're going to have to label and identify the parts of the mitochondria, including glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and, and the electron transport chain. Last question, or excuse me, fourth, fourth question. Fourth question, you're going to have to go over... You're going to be giving a pH chart with different substances on it. And you might have to say, okay, well, they might ask you, well, okay, so they might ask you, well, which is an acid? Which substance is a base? Which one is the strongest base? Which is the weakest acid? Which one is neutral? Okay, so you have to be able to answer questions like that. Lastly, Punnett squares, which most of you did very well on. Uh, make sure that you are able to, if they give you the dominant trait and the recessive trait, and they give you the letters for the parents, you're able to do a Punnett square and answer the various questions. What's the genotype? What's the phenotype? What's the probability or possibility of getting this type of offspring? What's the probability or possibility of getting this type of thing? Okay.